Tonight on Joy News Prime, floods in Accra wreak havoc as many properties are destroyed after hours of early morning downpour. Let's salvage what they can sell our scraps because our monies are gone. I have been wearing this thing since Saturday. Someone's clothing since Saturday. Everything is gone. Some residents in part of Accra jump into drains to salvage some of their lost items from last night's flood. We bring you stories of victims still counting their losses. We walk all the way from Nima to Paloma, whether we can see something to remove or something. No, there's no way. The president, His Excellency Nana Dudanko Ekufuado, leave Lear Street. So if the president leave Lear Street and the gutter just behind his house is like this, then it's unfortunate. Also in this bulletin, the minority leader in parliament, Harun Idrisu, demands a public inquiry into the alleged sale of portions of Achimota Forest. The president should open a public inquiry into the declassification of Achimota lands and let the public know who got what, for what, and how much. As Ghana officially unveils citizens' campaign to deal with a potential terror threat in the country, Defense Minister Dominic Nitti will reveals there are already terror cells in existence in the country. Cells, but terrorist cells in Ghana have been there for some time. In Ghana, they've been there for some time. It's not just that uh, we know them. We know these. I am saying the cells have been there for some time. That's why I said it's not everything we want to give us. This is your home of uh, fearless, credible, and independent journalism. My name is Samuel Kojobre. Stay with us for details. As the floodwaters receded in part of Accra, resident had to jump into drains in a desperate attempt to salvage some of their properties that were swept off by last night's rains. Several cars, motorcycles, beds and cooking utensils could still be seen in the drains, while helpless victims stood on the shoulders of the drains looking on. Joy News' Justice Beidou was in Nima, and here is his report. Inusa Nurahu hasn't slept all night. He lives in Nima and has been trekking in a desperate attempt to find his motorbike. We walk all the way from Nima to Paloma, whether we can see something to remove or something. No, there's no way. We have to, we have to exercise patients. The day should break. The water should come down before we see if we can get our properties. No, we can't. We didn't get anything. We lose everything. Inusa is one of many residents here who have taken things in their own hands, chasing and trying to salvage as much as they can from the water. We live with the president in the community. The president, His Excellency Nana Dudanko Ekufuado, live Lear Street. So if the president lives Lear Street and the gutter just behind his house is like this, then it's unfortunate. Because when the president even baths, the wastewater of the president ends here. And this is also a piece of an advice to the MPP government. If you want to break the eight and you live in your big cars, excuse me to say, in your big cars, in your big offices, and you sit there and you say you want to break your, the eight, it's your own cup of tea. When the June 3rd disaster happened and more than 150 people got killed, this gutter here was one of the worst affected places. It was hoped then that that disaster was going to change something about emergency preparedness in the capital city. When it starts raining, you are in fear. You don't know what can happen. So you start calling on God to have mercy or to, to let the rain subside. If it doesn't happen and the rain takes its full course, then it means that all the rooms will be taken over by the flood and we have to bring everything out sweep the water out and then day in, um, year in year out is the same story the same story and i live in this house with kids but my my youngest boy is about two years and um, five months that's my wife so the whole of yesterday night we've been standing till this morning in this house nearby pasta Zakaria Adomaku is hard at work, pumping out water from his flooded compound. He has been up since 2 a.m. Tuesday morning. This is the second time in one week that his house 
has come underwater. All the rooms will be taken over by the flood. And we have to bring everything out, sweep the water out, and then day in, um, year in, year out is the same story. Inside the house, her wife and children have all been up all night too, standing in water. Normally when it's the adult, you know that at least oh, the waist is... Uh, but the child, the baby, the two-year-old boy, what, what will happen if I'm carrying him and God forbid he slips out of my hand? What would have happened? When it's, I see the rains, I think the only thing I think about is life. God give us life again. Then I run up to go and wait till he subsides. And when will I be able to, if I don't wake up like I always do, what would have happened? This is a crash annual flooding story script read all over again. And the worst part of this year's rainy season isn't even here yet. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Accra. Now, a portion of the road in Teshi has caved in following last Monday's downpour. The increased volumes resulting from the prolonged rains wore away sand under the road, causing the road to cave in. Residents blame the newly constructed drain, which they say is too small to accommodate the large volumes of water. Michael Ashley was there earlier, interacting with residents and the road contractors who were racing against time to salvage the situation is that we are here and as you can see from the the the, the corner there somebody has built a house on the waterway which makes the water to turn at 90 degrees which according to the engineers it doesn't happen anywhere between saturday and today we have had two incidents you get it and whilst we are waiting you see the, the, we don't know when the next rain is coming the heavy downpour flooded homes destroying properties and displacing many in Chado, residents were angry when the running rainwater from a nearby drain flooded their homes. That's how deep at least this can go and it goes deeper than what you see. There's a vehicle not far from here, just behind me. You can see half submerged and there's a generator also not far from here. They blamed the local authority for poorly maintaining storm drains. You can look ahead, there is a concrete in the middle of the drain. You see, there is a concrete. You can see it from here. When from here, just go take a video of it. You see that the width here is way higher than that over there. It's like a funnel. So when the waters get there, they don't go, they build back. You get it? And that's where the problem is. Beyond that place, you see the water will be very low. So the whole thing is about when we dredge, we take off that concrete thing out of the place. Many of them continue to vent their frustrations to the MCE of La Dade Kotopon Municipal Assembly, Solomon Kote Nikwe. I know the trauma you've gone through within this few days, but that is why we are here. So please, let's do it devoid of emotions. Let's look at it holistically and let's find a lasting solution to the challenge. Please, okay, my brother, you are the reason why we are here. So please calm down. Let's 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 come together and see what we can do together. Please. In the interim, Solomon Kotenikwe promised the drains will be dredged and added that houses along the waterways will be demolished. He has also asked for a full-scale inquiry into the permits of all buildings along the waterways. You are pinpointing. If you're talking this way, I will leave it for you. You accept. Ask it. You accept. 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 You but whatever we have in the in the drain, we will desilt it. But we can't change the course of the water. But with the desilting, we will do it. Please, we will do the dredging, we will do it nicely. That is why we are here. And other issues too that has to be addressed, we will address them. Please. Deborah, all the structures, let's check their permits. I want to have that feedback. The bigger problem, however, lies with the Peshi Lagoon. Originally, a lot more meters wider than what we see here but today in 2022 
that doesn't seem to be the case. Activities not far from here, where the MCE has been inspecting, shows that indigents here intentionally are selling off the lands that originally belonged to this lagoon here. It's a buffer zone. The lagoon served as a major basin collecting the volumes of water from the area into the sea. That function is now under threat as unknown persons have started filling up the banks of the lagoon with sand for real estate development. The MCE vows to end this. My brother, these structures, we've come here to demolish these structures before. You see, that is what I said. We can't be here 24 hours. It's about being disciplined. I mean, the people are lawless. They are bent on doing something that is not lawful. You stop them, they are not ready to stop. You come here, I mean, today we are lucky to be here with our police. You come here and then they threaten you. We will kill you, we will do this. But we will get to the bottom of it. Uh, I think with my engineers, what we are saying now is some of the structures have to go down. And also we quickly have to come back and, and dredge the, 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 the lagoon. So that is what we'll be doing. Timelines to, to this, when can we expect the dredging and the demolition of these structures? We'll be starting something this week. For these residents, these interventions are not new. It is a lot of talk but with no action. But they remain concerned as more rains are expected in the coming days. For Joy News, Michael Ashale, Chado. And in Teshi. The road caved in there. Michael Ashali has small. This is one of the new bridges that was being constructed along the beach road. And this is in Teshi. But at the moment, the main road that existed before the new construction would have come through, as you can see here, has caved in. Eyewitnesses here have been telling me, giving me conflicting issues. But I have one person here who says he was here when it all began, taking the initiative to even block the road. Up ahead, if you get to, after the naval office, after the traffic light, you have to take a bend into um, Nungwa, into Teshi, and appear somewhere in Nungwa. That is the situation. So you can see in your visuals right now, the caved-in portion of the road. I have uh, uh, Mate, Ni Mate Ado, here, who will speak to me on what the situation exactly was around that time. Ma Mate, yes. uh, how did this happen? What, what time was this? Uh, yeah, somewhere um, 1 a.m. coming through to this early morning around 6 a.m. But this part of the of the bridge or this road caved in somewhere around 4 a.m. Uh, let, let me stick with that. So around 4 a.m. when you came here, what, what, what caused the, the road to actually cave? Did you see that? Yes, yes. We are standing here. Let's store for the other road. Says no car to don't pass here again because get car to be no. Get him up. I go away. I finish. She she mean mean honey. Where come about me? No, I'm back. We be the beach and I'm feel. Then for leisure. Okay. Beach is like a beach. I want. I go. Can you explain? I'm like God. I'm like me. You know what I mean? Because get back. I go away. Mama is one of the first people that were here just when this particular uh, part of the road caved in. He tells me some heavy duty vehicles used the stretch. At the time, the range was serious, and that was what probably could have caused this part of the road, the portion of the road, to cave in here. Uh, uh, so let's not take you to the ice island down where residents are appealing to the government to fulfill promises of constructing more storm drains to prevent future floods this is how wide the the main drain is okay but the exit point is as narrow as that tube over there so we have only two of them down there. So when the water goes, it just hits and comes back. Hits and comes back. That is how come a wall that is as, as thick as this nine inches block was able to be pushed down by, by the water. These vehicles are not accident vehicles. They were pushed down by the water. These vehicles, two of them, the other one is there. But you know, 
people have to eat so they're just salvaging what they can sell our scraps because our monies are gone i've been wearing this thing since saturday someone's clothing since saturday everything is gone everything everything is gone at this particular point as a matter of urgency we want the government to deploy professionals not job for the boys people professionals you know who will come and lay concrete wall structured walls along this path and then break that flyover over there provide a proper exit point into the order if not this will be an annual problem it will be a perennial problem and all of us here will keep suffering people have lived here for 30 years and this is like the worst thing after it's even more than June 3rd. If, if you can ask people, it's worse than just that the only thing that saved us is that this one around there was no fire. As you can see, you know, vehicles are in. Two cars are down here. A car was almost in. The boys tried to push it out and sold it as scraps. Just because, you know, monies are gone. They need to eat. Bossu, a boss are for Penny for war, Rasiway. Gun and Penny for Mumbashayo. Mumbashaye. Says I need to just so be up your friend. I chef, chef, and I do. Within your group of the shammy wife, who the tiger of a shammy says, Yeah, me damn, da, Yakupo, me damn, da, Agufado, me too mau, me too mau. Oh, I buy me war, I say, me dang, I a week. Got an umuya mami, muya got an umami. Send a muya, sir. Bosu, sir, muba try some muya. Agufado, me cassa me po, would you say, why a bonding, an abbey be, bow ya me papa? Usu, usu ba a shammy, and I meet to mao, meaning me so by a dorsum, but say, sir, my own mobile. Me pouch on my own mobile. Besham, baby, I'm a dimmy, me tiba to crap on me nim, me nim. Me name Pacho, your new baby da. Yet your form, Sir Missy, I just say, Sir Baby, I met a says, Sir Bosu, me nibby. And he says, Sir Missy, my sucrap, oh, to me, shame him. It's me, shame him. It's me, shame him. Reporting on floods in Accra is an annual ritual. The scripts are the same, and the devastation caused by flood waters has always been predictable. We we'll bring you old stories which could pass as today's flood story. It wasn't the first time lives have been lost to floods, though. Headlines capturing floods in Accra are as predictable as the rainy season that causes the havoc, and yet nothing seems to change. Even though I could go back many years, let's start from 2014. Now many parts of the national capital uh, today have been inundated as choke drains have made it difficult for um, the where for rainwater to freely flow. The bus terminal, the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, was full. This is not the first time Accra has been hit by floods, and almost every year the story or the reasons being given for the floods are the same. In 2015, we reported again. The cycle of flood is here again, and year by year, major cities in the country get flooded. The reasons, as always, are the same. Lack of planning, pouring of waste into drains, and a host of other human activities, when will it ever stop? We're still in the capital and on the flood. Several residents within a venue in Accra were temporarily thrown out of their homes by the flash floods. The affected residents are unsure how or where to pass the night. Then the fire and flood disaster occurred, killing 150 people. Musicians sang about the flood disaster. <laughs> Politicians promised me never again. The National Disaster Management Organization, the Hydrology Department of the Ministry of Water Resources, Works and Housing, and the city authorities will also work to coordinate the clearing and expansion of our waterways and the desilting of our drains. 
but in 2016 we're back to the same script hydrological engineer at the national disaster management organization nadmo wise a metaphor has blamed yesterday's flooding on blockages in channels leading to the odor drain in 2017 an elaborate plan was announced to once again end perennial flooding the government will in the coming days announce a comprehensive plan to deal permanently with the perennial flooding in the capital Accra. Clearly, we are back to the same pointers again. Journalists have reported, musicians have sung about it, politicians have promised, yet nothing has changed. Jojo Kobner, Joy News. Now, um, I've been joined in studio by Isaac Ej to talk about the economic impact of Ghana's perennial flood. Now, listening, watching that uh, clip, it, 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 it tells me we speak a lot. It looks like when it comes to acting, we, we have found one We've been speaking since 1960, and then we are still losing almost 200 million Ghana cities to floods almost every year. But I'm sure we, we, know, about we know what we have to do. Of course. Just sure. that. To do that, we don't have the will. Yesterday, remember, just look at the number of interventions government had to put in place, and yeah. still we are experiencing it. But could you, let's go to this. Since 1960, mm -hmm. you know, over 4 million people have been affected by floods in Ghana. And then it looks as if, you know, like almost every year we have floods. And it's about like 12% of the current 30.8 million population that we have in Ghana. And this data is from the United Nations Office of the Coordination of hum uh, Humanitarian Affairs. Mm -hmm. Now, if you should move to the next slide, it talks about the economic impact. And the economic impact since 1960 exceeds 780 million US dollars. And just like I said, at least one major flood disaster has occurred every year over the past 10 years, Kojo. Wow. And just like we were saying, and if you look at this slide, it says that a quarter of the country is below sea level. Mm -hmm. And 60% of its people in flood areas, flood risk areas, but measures, you know, measures it has taken have reduced the likelihood of major flooding. Just like mm -hmm. we mentioned the, mm -hmm. uh, the 2018 um, intervention and that of the mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And it says research shows that for every one dollar we spend, you know, on flood, um, you know, reduction, it saves at least four to. T uh, four to nine otherwise four to nine dollars otherwise spent in, in uh, emergency response when disaster occurs. It means that if we should do things right, every dollar we spend, we could save about you know um, three to let's say uh, um, nine dollars. Mm -hmm. So the option is in our hands. It's either we spend one dollar every year trying to prevent it, or when it's an emergency, we spend close to. Four to nine dollars, you know, trying to prevent it as an emergency. Kojo. Now, the only thing we have to add is that when we spend those monies, we need to ensure that the right things are done. Like Absolutely. yesterday, all the contract given in 2020, none of them. And we should be looking. We should be looking at long-term, you know, mm -hmm. solutions, not mm -hmm. short-term. Just like the the the, uh, the MC was saying, mm -hmm. that Drenji, what, what, what next? There will be a bigger discussion on this uh, later on, but we bring you the impact of our crest flats in pictures. The pictures were taken by Samuel Moore. <laughs>
Now, still to come here, the minority leader in parliament, Harun Adrisu, demands a public inquiry into the alleged sale of portions of Achimota Forest. The president should open a public inquiry into the declassification of Achimota lands and let the public know who got what, for what, and how much. As Ghana officially unveils citizens' campaign to deal with a potential terror threat in the country, Defense Minister Dominic Nitti will reviews there are already terror cells in existence in the country. Cells, but terrorist cells in Ghana have been there for some time. In Ghana, they've been there for some time. It's not just uh, we know them. We know these. I'm saying the cells have been there for some time. That's why I said it's not everything we want to give us. All these stories plus more after the break. The minority leader in parliament, Harun Adrisu, is demanding a public inquiry into the alleged sale of portions of Achimota Forest. According to the Tamil South MP, the inquiry will establish persons who acquired the land under the guise of declassifying the Achimota Forest. Meanwhile, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbing, has also charged the MPs to strictly comply with the asset declaration law. Our parliamentary correspondent, Parker Wilson, was, uh, has a wrap of today's proceedings. After close to two months, members of parliament have resumed their legislative duties. And of course, today, uh, the MPs from various constituencies were in the chamber. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Barben, in his welcome address to the members of parliament, indicated that the MPs in this meeting will hold the executive accountable. Now, that can only be done when the MPs are able to declare their assets. In this second session, we will take further vigorous steps to strengthen the hand of the House to hold governments and state institutions accountable to the people for the power, trust, resources, and hope reposed in them. The executive president, assisted by cabinet and state institutions, shall be called upon to account for the stewardship of the country. To succeed to implement this agenda, Parliament itself must be open, transparent, and accountable to the people. As the saying goes, charity begins at home. I will, together with leadership, initiate discussions with relevant state actors to put in place measures and systems to ensure that all members and staff of parliament complies with the declaration of asset regulations tax obligations and honor on time all outstanding issues of overpayment and other payment reported on by the Auditor General from 2001 to 2008 and 2009 to 2016, we ensure that they are all retired and settled by whoever is affected without any further delay. On the part of the majority leader, said Chairman Sabonso, he believed the call was in the right direction, but he had concerns with our provisions in the law. The rationale for this is for the Auditor General to interrogate assets acquired by public officers. Unfortunately, the construct of the, of the Constitution is such that once they are lodged with the Auditor General, he himself is disabled from opening the assets so declared to ensure that people who have acquired assets respond to their tax liabilities. Is the reason why the assets are lodged with the Auditor General. For whatever reason, our own constitution treads a different path. The speaker, curiously, some notable officers are left out. For instance, the Council of State. 
They are not there. Serious fraud office. They are watchmen in the system. The special prosecutor. <laughs> For, former serious fraud office. Uh, Yoko. Now, as you can, they are watchmen in the system. We should have a system to watch the watchmen. And yet the constitution does not require them to submit themselves to this. Even now, the MMDCs, they are not there. The minority leader, Harun Idris, to commenting on the subject, actually went a step further by demanding a public inquiry into the sale of uh, some portions of Achimota Forest. There's also the news of declassification of Achimota Forest and lands and public, public officers and politicians grabbing lands in the name of the Republic. Mr. Speaker, without any hesitation, this must be treated as an urgent matter. The President should open a public inquiry into the declassification of Achimota lands and let the public know who got what, for what, and how much we, 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 need, we, need to, we need to we need to appreciate that even the reliance the reliance on an executive instrument 144 the Forest Act of 1927 that's an outdated law let me remind the president and the leadership that he should go and look at the land use and special special planning act of 2016 act 926 rezoning and reclassification the mandate was not given to the president mr speaker so we would need to welcome ourselves back dealing with this uh, issue the mps have however been asked to be punctual in this meeting the mps are expecting to consider a number of bills and also equally uh, consider a number of agreements that will be put before them by the government for joining us i am christy parker wilson now let's still stay in Parliament where three absentee MPs, I also Central MP Henry Corte, Dom Kobenya MP Sarah Adwa Safo and the Asin North MP Kennedy Japon are expected before Parliament's Privileges Committee for breaching the 15-day absentee rule. Henry Corte is scheduled to appear before the committee on Thursday, 27th May 2022. Sarah Adwa Safo is expected to appear on Friday 27th and Kennedy Japon is also expected to appear before the committee on the 30th of May. According to a ranking member on the committee, Rickett Kwekuhagan, the three MPP MPs have so far not indicated their willingness not to appear before them. In an interview with Joy News, he observed that an MP who fails to appear before the committee will be cited for contempt. The three MPP MPs were referred to the Privileges Committee for breaching the 15-day sitting rule of Parliament. People have been absent and all that. With this, all this information, we have gathered them from the table office. So that's what we are going to be working on now. It's for us to physically meet, you know, here tomorrow. Hopefully, unfortunately, there is a Mozambican, uh, Mozambique president coming to the house tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Our meeting was supposed to be at 11. So I have, last night, um, tried to discuss with the chairman to try and see if we can push it back, you know, to the afternoon. Because obviously the, the gentleman, the president, will not finish by 11 o'clock for us to have it. So that's what is going to happen. That's the I'm thing. curious. Have you invited, have you written officially to the three years? Well, I was just coming to that. Okay. I think you are ahead of the game. So 25th, which is tomorrow, Wednesday, is when we'll have this maiden meeting. 26th, which is a Thursday, uh, Thursday I believe. Thursday, yes. Is when we'll invite the first, you know, person. Mm -hmm in the name of Honorable Henry Corti, okay. will be the first person yeah, at the moment. It's an in-camera, but obviously uh, tomorrow's, meet, um, tomorrow's meeting will put all the modalities together as to exactly how we are going to conduct it. But invitation has gone out as far as I'm concerned. The three MP. Yes, the three MPs. So I've given you... They responded. Um, let, let's hold on. I've given you the 26th right. of Honorable Henry Corti, the 27th which is the Friday, is Honorable Adwa Safo. Mm. 31st, which is the following Monday, I believe, is Honorable Kennedy Japan. Now, we got a response from Honorable Kennedy Japan that he was going for a medical review in the state. So if you want to see, uh, if you want to understand the way we've done the, the order of meeting them, it's the reason why Honorable Kennedy Japan's one is the last one, mm. because he is informed that, that 
going on review in the, I believe in the US, and will not be around until about 28, 29. So that's why he's the last person. I'm yet to find out whether we have, obviously he responded because he needed time. So he was asking for permission for us to give him time. Um, I haven't, as far as I'm concerned, I have not received any such, normally these things will come to the clerk's office. I have not been informed by the clerk that um, they have either, you know, said they can't come or whatever. So I assume that if they have received the invite, then we expect to see them. Now, Senior Presidential Advisor Yao Osafo Mafo says he is worried that for the first time, Ghana has become a target for terrorist activities. He also cited the sub region as an epicenter following recent attacks on neighboring countries. He said Ghana's abundant mineral resources within the sub region put it at the risk of a possible attack, a reason for concerted effort to arrest the situation. My colleague Samuel Mbura has details of the story. The proliferation of firearms in the country has been classified as a high national security threat and one of the reasons there is a call for action, especially when neighboring countries have been attacked by terrorists. The Ministry of National Security launched a citizen awareness campaign dubbed the See Something, Say Something campaign. This campaign aims to make citizens highly alert and report suspicious characters in the wake of terrorist alert signals by security analysts. Senior Presidential Advisor Yao Osafumafu at the launch called for active citizenship participation in voluntary information to the security. Considering Ghana's abundant gold resources and the access it has to the Gulf of Guinea clearly indicates that our country remains a prime target for the terrorist groups. The fact that we have not been attacked yet not imply that we are eternally immune from a terrorist attack. Certainly not. Deliberate actions and conscious efforts, not only by our state security and intelligence agencies, but also all Ghanaians and persons within the country's jurisdiction are required to keep the terrorists away. He said the government will continuously retool the security services to make them proactive. Government continues to support the ministries of national security, defense and interior, and other relevant state authorities in myriad ways to implement measures towards safeguarding the state against terrorism and violent extremism. The National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, said the fight against terrorism should be seen as a national duty, devoid of partisan politics. The See Something, See Something campaign, therefore, is a critical preventative measure by the Minister of National Security and the other security ministries to, first of all, empower Ghanaians, empower Ghanaians to be more conscious about their own security, and secondly, to enhance their relationship with state security authorities. Minister for Information, Kojo Pong Kroma said, effort will be made to crack down on misinformation, which creates unnecessary fear and panic. Well, there are laws in this country that deal with the publication of false news with the intent of causing panic and fear. Those laws are still on our statute books, and especially at this time, when we are trying to get credible information out, we will not hesitate to use those laws uh, if persons are found culpable of deliberately misinforming the public with the uh, objective of causing panic and fear. We need to get that out of the window so that people can hear and see what the facts are, particularly on the subject of terrorism and how they can respond and participate in this uh, anti-terrorism program. Ranking member of Parliament Select Committee on Defence and Interior, James Agaga says he will support the government to protect the country's territorial borders and citizens because security is a national concern. But first of all, it's important to underscore the point that we have never politicized issues of terrorism, starting from the time the um, framework for countering terrorism and violent extremism was launched. I mean, we were very supportive. You saw us here in our numbers when the security strategy was launched. 
today we are here once again to lend our support to the launching of this wonderful initiative to create awareness about how existential the um, issues of terrorism and violent extremism are. And so we believe that it's a matter for our collective effort and action, which is why we are here in our numbers. And so far from being political, we think that the right measures must be put in place to, to deal with the threat. If you see any suspicious character at public places, please prompt authorities by calling on 999. Samuel Mbura reporting for Joy News. So when you see something, say something. But still staying on the subject, Defense Minister Dominic Nitiwul, in a yet to be aired interview on PM Express tonight, reveals the existence of terror cells in the country. He also highlighted the need to involve the ordinary Ghanaian in the campaign at this time to make the fight against terrorism easier. No, the, the, the terrorists have always said openly, yes. they are not even hiding it. They, 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 point they, point are, Ghana. They, are, they are coming to Ghana. Yes. And, and, and they've granted interviews. I can share some of them with you. We want Ghana. We will we'll go after Ghana. Mm. And we have intelligence on the ground that have arrested many, many people, mm. uh, even some of them big leaders in our country, trying to hold conferences, trying to do some stuff. And we said, no, we will not allow it. Is there charter? Are you picking up charter that says that? Any attack is imminent, but that's not good enough for me to sell you that. I just say that it's, the threat is real. Okay, Th that kind of deep intelligence is not something I want to share on national TV. But I can say that what we pick out, it is real, and and we think that we should do something about it. Our view is that it is time to involve the citizens as part of the campaign. It's, it should be a massive campaign for all of us, including the media, the chiefs, the traditional elders, the, the assemblymen. They should all be part of this campaign. And that's the way we intend to do it, so that the ordinary citizens are all part of this campaign. This ground opening is just the beginning of it. We want yeah. to get you involved, the assemblymen, the politicians, parliament, everybody involved in it. But that's curious. You, you haven't involved us before. You trace the history of this. Why now? We didn't involve you because we believe that what we're doing was enough. And you can see that once there's no attack, it was really enough. It's not, it's not just by the grace of God only. I can say it's grace of God is God, but it's not just by the grace of God only. It's all that we have been doing over the period. But at this point, we believe it is time to get everybody involved in, in, in the fight against terrorism. And to say, if you see is something... Is it because you suspect they are amongst us now? It, the cells have always been there for some time. Cells, but terrorist cells in Ghana? Have been there for some time. In Ghana? They've been there for some time. It's not just... And uh, we know them? We know these cells? I am saying the cells have been there for some time. That's why I said it's not everything we want to give us. I'm, I'm guessing that you, be, you have them under monitoring. Uh, uh, every time. That. And that's why I use the word that we keep arresting people. So make a date for the full interview at 9 p.m. on the PM Express with Evans Mingsan. Now, on the National Science and Math Quiz, it was sweet revenge for Opokuari School as they humbled their noisy opponent from Osei to two SHS and Kumasi High to be crowned new APSA Ashanti Regional Champions. Their Santasi boys lost their semi-final contest against Kuhis and only managed their place in the grand finale after edging past regional rivals Prempe College in a tiebreaker contest. Once they set their eyes on the trophy, there was no giving up. In the end, Owas is a new Comerican landlord. It's been 20 years. It's been 20 years since Opoku are lifted and set fingers on anything like a trophy in the National Science and Math Quiz. That 20 year drought has been ended, at least at the level of the Ashanti Regional AFSA Championship. And today, Pokuari School is the new Ashanti Regional Champion. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I, I, I can see you can't even control yourself. I mean, yes. Tell me how you feel. I mean, you lost, you lost to Greece in the semi-final contest. Do you think you're going to win the final? Yeah, we are going to win the final. Our head boy is here. Allah, he's going to come. He's going to come. He's going to come. He's going to come. Talk to me about talk to me about your performance this year. I mean, you started. You are not so impressive. 44 points in your first contest, and then semi-finals. You are beaten by Kumasi High School. I mean, they thought you were going to win this contest. Okay, I'm you sure you actually even thought you were going to win. No, 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 no. Thank you very much. Um, slow and steady. Oko High School came. Um, I would, I would have to commend the boys, they have really worked hard and then ultimately God has crowned their hard work with success. Kudos to them. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, but I mean, to have lost to Kumase High School in uh, semi-finals itself was phenomenal. That meant that, I mean, they were, they were stronger than you. You know, that's how things are. Sometimes you win, sometimes you go to take the hell, but um, we, we had to take the tiebreaker and then we beat Rampage. We went to the final. You said you, you wanted to do what? We wanted to Okay, that's why you lost to Sumasi. Yes, yes, it was a strategic display. We did. We just wanted to meet Prempe College, okay. and, and so as we wanted, that's what. They, we, okay, so so this year you have beat Prempe College, you have beat Oset, and you have beat Kumase High School. I mean, tell me, how, how, how does that make you feel? You know one thing for sure. Tell me, this was a battle of Alaya. If I OT beat um, Yas and they met Prempe College, High School also beat Saint Louis and they came to beat Oboku High School. So we just wanted to take a revenge on them, and that's actually what we did. <laughs> Tell me how you feel about this year's um, this year's win. Yes, this year's win is one of a kind to us. That's, this is one of a kind. And then we wanted to prove something. The ideological perspective that Prempe Khalid can never be better than Upoko is. And that was what we did. In the time we have show that we are the two. Once and for all. Let's, let's be very honest. In a, in, a, in a final round, there was just a three point gap between you and then Kumasi High School. It would have been anybody's game. Tell me how you honestly felt in the final round? We felt uneasy, but we just wanted to give them some this thing, them, what the, them? some yeah. gap. Yeah. We just wanted the gap to be so close, and the jubilation will be what? Hi. The boys are enjoying themselves and that's how we wrap up today's edition of the uh joy news prime for you there's more news at myjawonline.com coming up is prime business my name is samuel kojo brace good evening